Welcome to the video tutorial on the Logic Analyzer. The Analyzer is an invaluable tool for simultaneously monitoring multiple signals in real-time digital systems. At this point in your studies, you should be familiar with the simulation generated by the synthesis tools. Here, the software creates a simulated waveform that best approximates how the device will work once downloaded to the chip. Once in circuit, however, other signals can influence the actual operation and testing becomes a little more complicated. One could attempt to test the device with an oscilloscope, however, only a couple of signals would be tested at a time. Enter the logic analyzer. Essentially, the logic analyzer records signals over time similar to an oscilloscope. A few compromises are made to enhance one's ability to monitor digital circuits, however. Instead of two to four channels found on oscilloscopes, logic analyzers have typically between 16 and 132 channels. Some have even more. Your logic analyzer has only 32 channels. Also, instead of monitoring every nuance of each signal, logic analyzers see only highs and lows. Bottom line, the logic analyzer is designed to create waveforms very much like the simulated waveforms in your synthesis tool. Basically, all you need to do is hook up each signal that you wish to monitor and set a few parameters. Logic analyzers digitize incoming signals. Let's look at this for a moment. The logic analyzer has a clock that tells it when to capture information on the incoming signal. At each negative edge of the clock, we'll indicate data capture. Now all we need is an incoming signal. Note the center line indicates the threshold across which a signal is determined to be either high or low. At each edge of the clock, the incoming signal is interpreted and the displayed signal is set to either low or high. Nuances caused by capacitance in the circuit are filtered out and the display shows an ideal output. Note here also that the output waveform is only as good as the sampling rate. A slower clock on the same incoming signal would likely miss the first peak altogether. Basically, you need to set your sampling frequency to at least twice the frequency of the fastest changing signal. If your tested device is changing at 10 kHz, then you need a minimum sampling frequency of 20 kHz or even higher if there's enough buffer memory to capture the changing waveform. Now that we know what the analyzer does to our signals, Let's boot the system up and see how to take data. The first thing you'll notice is that the TLA 700 analyzer works from a Windows platform. Shortly after turning the system on, the monitor will show the following screen. After the software loads up, the system screen is illustrated. With only one data acquisition module plugged into our computer, the system window seems fairly simplistic. Basically, the box in the system screen indicates that there is one 32-channel plug-in module. If this were a 64-channel analyzer, another plug-in module would be indicated to the right of the LA-1 box. The plug-in module is on the right side of the analyzer as you face the front. It has two acquisition cables plugged into it, with each carrying 16 signals. Without removing them, note the designations on the adapters you should see a CK3, C3, and C2 on one adapter, and a CK0, A3, and A2 on the other. These signal names will show up at several places. The CK3 and CK0 are signal lines used for externally clocking the logic analyzer. The C3, C2, A3, and A2 are names for groups of eight lines each. Basically, if you hook up C2 to your circuit, then you need to designate C2 as your input group or the analyzer will gather information from the wrong probes. Toward the probe end of the acquisition cables is a connector with similar designations. However, the signal groups C3, C2, A3, and A2 are now broken down into the eight signals, seven down to zero. Take a moment to look at these. It is very important that you hook up the same probes that you designate in the software. 
Continuing down the cables, notice that each wire is color coded. The order of this color code should match the order of the acquisition pins at the end of the cable. Note that the color bands are in the same order. Also note that in each bundle there is one black connector. This connector is the common ground. You will hook this to a ground signal on your circuit prior to an acquisition. Without this attached, you will likely get random noise and very little information. Note, one of the most common errors made in hooking up the logic analyzer is failing to hook up this common ground. A closer look at the end of the acquisition cables shows the ground line clearly designated in black, along with the other color bands used to simplify correlating signals in the software. Finally, we have the connectors that plug into the end of the acquisition cables. One of these must be placed on the end of each signal line that you will be using. They preserve the integrity of the acquisition cables and data collection should not be performed without them. The final hookup looks something like this. The pins on the Altera chip come out to a header. Several wires are placed in the header and the grabbers are connected to these wires. These grabbers go to the acquisition cable of the logic analyzer. 